anyone who serves me must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. The Lord be with you. And also. As we approach our holy God, we realize that we have sinned and that we have come short of his glory. Let us therefore humbly confess our sins to him, kneeling and saying together. O God, our righteous judge, our merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon us, we pray in you, and forgive us by the love which you have shown towards us in Jesus Christ, who for our sakes died and rose again. Give us to repentance by the power of your Holy Spirit, and enable us to forsake our evil ways and to serve you in newness of life. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, Amen. time for amendment of life and grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has died for us. Let us adore him, saying together, Salvation belong to God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord. According to your word. Blessed are you, O Lord. Jesus. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our hearts. The lesson for this service shall be taken from the book of Luke, chapter 23. We commence reading from verse 1. Luke, chapter 23, from verse 1 to verse 7. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no crime in this man. But they were all just saying, He steers up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to the Herod jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem. And that's fine. Let's bow down our head as we pray. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you for the privilege that you have given to us on this Tuesday of the Holy Week, 7th of April 2020. We thank you because you kept us alive even amidst the pandemic, the, the epidemic that is ravaging the world. Lord, we pray that as we listen to your word, you will bless every one of us. Amen. Thank you because we know you have answered. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are looking at the politics of truth. The politics of truth. I'll be looking at Pilate. The text is taken from Luke chapter 3, chapter 23. I'll read only verse 2. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is, is Christ a king. We thank God for the privilege that we have to listen to his word. But then, before we go into the word proper, I want to give definitions of certain terms. What is politics? What is truth? And also, 
look at Pilate, who he was. Politics is a profession that, that is devoted to governance and manning the affairs of the people. It is the science of governing people. It is the ethics which has to do with the regulations and government of nations or states. And then it is also important that we understand that in politics, our major duty is the safety, the peace, and the prosperity of the people under our governance. What is truth? Truth in the actual sense is a fact that has been verified. Fact that has been verified. Truth is conformity to rules, fidelity, constancy, steadfastness, and faithfulness. It is the practice of speaking what is true at all times. Truth also is freedom from falsehood. But if you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, if you are devoted to Christ, then truth is Christ, pure and simple. Who was Pilate? Pilate was the fifth governor of the Roman province of Judea under the emperor Tiberius. He ruled between, 20, between 26 and 36 or 27 and 37 CE. That's Christ's era. He, preside, he was the one that presided over the trial of Jesus and he equally gave right to his crucifixion. Reading Luke chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the fifteenth year of Tebaro Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, so the Bible recognized that Pontius Pilate was the governor at the time when Jesus was here on earth. So let's look at power. When a man is in power, like Pilate was in power, Pilate had political power. If we are in power, authority has been given to us. We have been asked to manage the affairs of men at that particular time. And in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3b says, that he that ruled over the affairs of men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And then also in Psalm 101, verse 2b and 3b, the Bible records, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. So no matter the area of governance that you are involved in, you are in power, you are in authority. 3a also says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. So a man that is in power has certain responsibilities. Pilate was in power. He had political power. He was a Roman governor in the province of Judea at that time. He had the power, the authority to regulate what happened during his own era. But how he used his power would have determined at that time whether Jesus Christ was free or whether he was condemned. Let's look at certain things that played out or certain things that happens when we are in power. When you are in power, you must recognize that number one, power is transient. Nobody is in power forever because nobody lives forever. Only God lives forever. So Pilate did not know that he was not going to be in power forever. So what was needful for him to have done at that time, he probably didn't do or he did not do. Number two, in the case of Pilate, like so many of us, he was carried away by certain things. Number one, Pilate was carried away by his position. Number two, he was carried away by his relationships. Number three, he was carried away by the voice of the crowd. Number four, Pilate was carried away by the Jewish authority of his time. And then finally, number five, Pilate was carried away by the underlying power of Satan, which had been employed at that time to ensure that Jesus Christ was crucified. Also, Pilate had power to release Jesus or to crucify him. 
but he chose the letter. John chapter 19, verse 10. For no reason, for the for reasons best known to Pilate, like so many of us also. I don't know why he chose to do what he did, doing things in a wrong way, deciding to crucify Jesus even though he had power and influence to release him. Also, we notice that in Luke chapter 23, in verse 4, verse 14, verse 22, verse 41, and in John chapter 18, verse 38, and in John chapter 19, verse 4 and verse 6, Pilate confessed, I find nothing in this man. Also, I have found no fault in this man that will warrant me to allow him to be crucified. Amidst all those verdicts given by Pilate, he still gave permission for Jesus to be crucified. Why did Pilate do that? In Luke chapter 23 and verse 12, Pilate used his power, the power that he had, to crucify, to release Jesus, to reconcile his relationship with Herod. The Bible tells us that Pilate and Herod had been in enmity for a very, very long time, but he used the opportunity of the crucifixion of Jesus to reconcile his relationship with Pilate, with Herod. Do you kill the truth in order to reconcile with falsehood? In Mark chapter 15 and verse 10, Pilate knew the chief priests had handed over Jesus because of envy. But even then, Pilate went ahead to give judgment that Jesus should be crucified. Also, we noted in that passage, or in so many other passages of the Bible, that at one point, Pilate's wife sent a message to him that he should have nothing to do with that righteous man. But Pilate chose to ignore the voice of his wife, which was the voice of reason at that time, and he went ahead to crucify Jesus. In conclusion, I want to ask us, do we stand on the side of truth in the things we do, in the judgments we make, or do we continue in falsehood, irrespective of whose ox is God? I pray for us that as we mark the resurrection of Jesus, God will help us to stand on the side of truth, Amen. and that God will deliver us from falsehood. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let us bow down our head as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for tutoring us. We pray that as we live our life, you will help us Amen. and deliver us from the politics of falsehood. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will help us to play the politics of truth in the right way. Amen. Thank you because we know you have answered. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. As we rise on our feet, we will reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the born Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to join the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us, the Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that we be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. Amen. 
grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, guide and defend our rulers. And give them from our hope. And give your ministers with righteousness. And make your chosen people joyful. O oh Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, make clean our hearts within us. They call it for the Tuesday in the Holy Week. Gracious and merciful God, for our sake, for the, our sake, your Son became incarnate and suffered death upon the cross. Have mercy on all who have not known you or who deny the faith of Christ crucified and take from us all hardness of heart and contempt of your word for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In continuation of our prayer, I want us to pray. I want us to appreciate God for his mercy over our life. That even in the face of this pandemic, that we have not, we are still alive, that God is still with us, that his mighty hand has not departed from us. Let's pray that the Lord has not given us up to death. Let's appreciate Jesus for all that he has done for us, for his death upon the cross, for his burial and for his resurrection. Let's pray for the world, that the Lord God will stem the tide of this epidemic that is ravaging everywhere, this pandemic that is ravaging everywhere. Let's pray for the nations that are hard hit by it, that the Lord will deliver them. Let's pray for our nation, Nigeria, that the Lord will deliver this country. That those who have contacted the disease already, that the Lord will heal them. Let's pray for Christians all over the world. That the Lord will help every one of us to stand on the side of truth. And that the Lord will deliver us from falsehood. Let's pray that like Pilate, whose name has become synonymous with the crucifixion of Jesus, that our name will not be synonymous with evil. That the Lord will deliver us from everything that is called evil wherever it is. Let's talk to the Lord concerning our church, the Church Universal, our own church, the Church of Nigeria, and our own local churches. Let's pray that the presence of the Lord will continue to be mighty in our midst. Pray for your family wherever they are, that the hand of the Lord will be upon them, protect them and guide them. Let's begin to bring our prayer to a close. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weaknesses and give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can we say the grace together in fellowship? Amen. The love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we sing church from the Church of Nigeria Hymna 874, we take our offering. 874, we take our offering.
us from home. You can also sow your seed by asking for your church account and then you can give your e-offering by the grace of God. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. We appreciate everyone who has worshipped with us and those who have worshipped at home and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to encourage you to keep coming for this service. God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow down our head as we pray. Let's commit our ways to the hand of the Lord. Let's pray that the Lord will bless us, bless our going out, bless our coming in, bless our undertaking, bless everything that we do. Let's pray that the Lord will prosper our ways, that the Lord will deliver us from this disease that is in the land. Let's pray for divine protection upon you and upon all our people wherever they are. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Unto God's gracious mercy and love, I commit every one of us. May the Lord bless and keep us. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us. Amen. And may the Lord be gracious unto us. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Amen. the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit Amen. be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah. Hey. 